Now on 767 News. MP for Dubla donates to education through Lunch Shed Initiative. Portney Flood Mitigation Project near completion. And Chief Fisheries Officer sees a positive outlook to nuisance seaweed. In sports, one match postponed and another cancelled in DFE matches. Welcome everyone, I'm Alicia George and you're watching 767 News. We'll be back after this break to bring you the latest stories and developments across Dominica. Introducing the Ashley Collection at Quartz. Quartz has joined with Ashley Furniture, the number one selling home furnishings brand in America, to bring you the most extraordinary furniture selection at unbeatable prices. It's now easier than ever before to find that perfect furniture piece for your home. And what's more, you can add that special touch with the right accent piece from our range of designer accessories from Ashley. Create the perfect look for your home with the Ashley Collection at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Visit the new Ashley Gallery at our Roseau store. Welcome back. First up this news time, students at the Dubla Primary School are one step closer to receiving an improved level of comfort while learning. On Wednesday, April 22nd, Parliamentary Representative for Dubla, the Honorable Catherine Daniel, presented a check of $6,000 to principal of the school, Jocelyn Alexis Joseph, to aid in the completion of a much-needed lunch shed. At present, students are forced to sit alongside the school area to eat their snacks and lunches. Principal Alexis Joseph told 767 News that construction work on the shed began in November of 2014. We needed an area for the children to have their lunch because um, without that the children sit outside, sometimes on the ground, sometimes on chairs and when it's raining it's even worse so we decided even before my time it, the foundation was laid for this project so we decided to complete it so that the children would have a place for them to sit and eat. Minister Daniel, who is also a former educator, said she saw a need for the luncheon facility and decided to assist by providing the necessary funds. In November of 2014, she committed $10,000 worth of materials towards the project. Wednesday's additional contribution of $6,000 is expected to complete the lunch shed, which should be ready before the end of the school year in July. I came once when it was raining and y'all were just sitting outside on the concrete, some of you having your lunch. And I found that was very, you know, not too healthy, and it wasn't a pleasant sight. But I was a bit, you know, when I concerned about your school not being finished, you had gone on Easter vacation, and to come back to the same unfinished shed. So I asked your principal, what again, how much is needed to complete, and she gave me a sum. And today, I am here, as a former teacher, as a parliamentary representative, to present a check to the Dubla Primary School so that the project can be completed and you can eat your lunch in style and class. The former educator also encouraged the students to be mindful of the upcoming Grade 6 National Assessment examinations and to try their best to perform well. I want to see your names at the top of the list. You do not have long, you have just about three or four weeks. So work hard, study hard, so that your journey continues at a secondary school and then up to college. You will have a lot of time to play. Organize yourself. School is not a lifetime. So make use of the lessons that you get. And it's only through hard work that you can pass and get a, not only a pass, but get a scholarship a bursary. This will be very good. And I wish you all all the best in your endeavors to work hard so that you can make Dublin proud, make the constituency proud, make your parents proud, and not forgetting your teachers who live hard with you, make them very, very proud. 
The Dubla Primary School at present has a student population of about 38 students. In other stories, Minister for Public Works and Ports, Honorable Ian Pinard, is reporting that the Fortney Road is to be reopened soon. Honorable Pinard made the statement in light of ongoing work on the Fortney Box Culvert Crossing Project, part of the government's flood mitigation project. The project was launched following flood damage suffered to mainly the southern part of the country during the December 2013 trough system. Costing us over half a million dollars to do the, the retaining wall and the box culvert crossing and also another co uncovered box drain project. So there's two projects. One is uh, at 408,000, which is the retaining wall and the box culvert. And the other one, the uncovered box drain, is 103,000. The project includes the demolition and reconstruction of 8-meter box culvert crossing, construction of 12-meter retaining wall for slope stabilization, and demolition and reconstruction of a 4-meter culvert crossing and resurfacing of drain with 40-meter of BRC concrete. There is also the construction of 134 meters of open reinforced concrete box drain. And so far, you know, the project is progressing nicely. And we're hoping to have that road open in a few days. In fact, the, the crossing has been done. We're waiting for, we're waiting for the concrete to, you know, to, to cure properly. And then we'll open the road, the Fortney Road, for the, for the general public. Minister Pinard said once the project is complete, the area should be able to withstand heavy rain. The heavy rain associated with the December 24, 2013 trough system resulted in flooding, damage to retaining structures, and the blockage of road near the Fortney Junction. During the project, Fortney residents had to resort to using the Beauvoir Castle Comfort Road to get to their homes, a road which was also damaged as a result of the trough system flooding. Residents are hoping that this road, used as a back door to access the communities of Fortney and Eggleston, will soon be repaired by the government. Are you ready to get serious about your health? Well, if you won't listen to your nurse or your doctor, perhaps you should listen to the Prime Minister. 767 News had the pleasure of sitting in on a recent interview with Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt as he spoke on development in the economy and his administration's contribution to economic development in Dominica. One of the topics which was stressed upon by the Prime Minister was the seriousness of chronic non-communicable diseases, CNCDs. From where I sit, I am very worried about the prevalence of CNCDs. Um, because it is not only affecting the older people, affecting very young people. I have seen young people get heart attacks. I've seen young people um, suffer from acute um, 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 acute um, high blood pressure, um, acute um, diabetes. I've seen young people's um, limbs and, and, and arms amputated because of, 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 of diabetes. I've seen young people get blind. Um, um, you know, illness associated with diabetes and so forth. Um, you know, there's a high incidence of, of, of cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, um, prostate cancer. And I think we have to, we have to draw to all of us the need for us to take better care of ourselves. Prime Minister Skerritt encouraged the public to eat healthier and exercise more, even as the number of homes with vehicles increased. The fact, the fact is, life has changed, you know. Um, we go home when we lie down on a bed and watch television, you know, lie down on the couch and watch television, and you know, um, we're eating right. So it, the number of things which we're not doing that we should be doing, or when we're not doing right, you understand? We have to, I, I know life is busy for all many of us, we have, we have to exercise, we have to eat right. We have to minimize on the high intake of sugar, the high intake of salt, you know. Um, it's a real, it's a frightening situation in the region. The Prime Minister fears that CNCDs will become one of the major threats in economies across the world if national, regional and even global prevention programs on CNCDs are not implemented. It is so easy, he explained, for a family to move from middle class to poverty as a result of non-communicable diseases. We have to um, look seriously at CNCDs, and I, and I believe that we have to orient our health system 
um, to focus heavily on primary health care. You know, um, too many of us rush to the hospital when we have an issue. We have to, we have to reorient ourselves to, to focus in even more heavily on primary health care. At the 2007 CARICOM Summit on CNCDs, research showed that the Caribbean is the region of the Americas was affected by the epidemic of chronic disease. The human and economic cost burden of these conditions remains unstable and could undermine the development of these small countries. More stories and updates when 767 News returns. Stay tuned. Accurate. Dependable. We go where others have not gone before. We bring you in-depth reporting on the stories that matter. Tune in weeknights from 8.30 p.m. to 767 News with repeats at 10.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. the following morning. 767 News, Dominica's number one news source. Only on Digital Play TV, Channel 3. Let's see how easy it is to play Powerball and win. Simply select four numbers from 1 to 30 and a power pick number from 1 to 5 and that's it. You have just selected your winning numbers for Powerball or just get a quick pick and let the machine select your lucky numbers for you. Remember Powerball is drawn every Wednesday and Saturday from 9 p.m. Powerball from the Dominica National Lottery. Thanks for staying with us. Director of the Dominica State College Student Services Division, Edgar Hunter, has commended the National Cooperative Credit Union, NCCU, for the launching of their inaugural Youth Week. Hunter made the statement during the event's media launch on Monday. NCCU is the leading cooperative credit union, not only in Dominica, but throughout the OECS, and they must be commended highly for this great initiative. We live in an instant society where young people want everything now with little concern for the future. So your tagline, wild about saving, which young people will say is on fleet or on point, okay? You must be commended for such a tagline. Hunter said he is delighted that much emphasis is being placed on helping the youth to save while adding that the same should be done for investment. And I also hope that you are um, will consider budgeting and money management. I just came from a CSME mission with a few young people. And um, there's a lot of opportunities for NCCU and for young people in general to invest or to get involved in investing in right through the Caribbean, through CSME. So um, I hope NCCU is getting its uh, CSME ready because a lot of people will be moving through the islands, trying to set up accounts. They would like to be able to deliver accounts in Dominica. So if you have an account in Trinidad, for example, you'll be able, we would like to be able to access that account right in Dominica. So I hope in your amalgamation, you don't only keep it to Dominica, but you amalgamate even further throughout the region. Hunter said the DSC is delighted to be part of the Youth Week. On Thursday, April 23rd, many presentations will be held at the Dominica State College where the students will be advised on important saving tips. A panel discussion will also be held at the NCCU's boardroom on the topic Algamation at 5 p.m. on Thursday. One of the highlights of Youth Week is a television show titled Talk That Talk to be featured on Marpinch Channel 5 at 8.30 p.m. on Thursday. The aim of the show is to encourage the youth to save as much as possible while providing them with the benefits of saving, among other information. The recent occurrence of sargassum seaweed, better known as seaweed, littering the Caribbean waters and coastlines of numerous countries can be used for positive purposes, says Chief Fisheries Officer Andrew McGlaw. In an interview with 767 News on Tuesday, McGlaw said although the occurrence of sargassum to many is new, it began appearing in Caribbean waters four years ago. We had a, a freak system where the current patterns changed and rather than having the currents move in a northeasterly direction, our currents were coming from the west and as a result carried a lot of this weed into our region. Um, the weed has advantages and disadvantages. And you will recall about, again, in that same period four years ago, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, dolphin fish. 
um, came into our waters and to our shores because of that weed. And we saw a tremendous amount of these juvenile species of, of fish of dolphin landed by our fishers. Um, never before we had seen so many juvenile fish landed by our fishers in, in respect of that. And it's again because of the, the, the protection um, provided by that weed and also the associated feed uh, that comes with that weed that allows it to, to congregate fish, particularly migrating species like dolphin um, and marlin and so on. <coughs> Magro said the Sakasum provides a greater supply of fish. However, it is a serious hazard for fishers and the marine life near the shoreline. Uh, the weed can get um, your engines clogged and block in the water passages which cools the engine and can result in serious um, problems for fishers at sea. That's one, one of the, the down turns of, of that weed. It can also interfere with the fishers um, navigation arrangements where it comes to fishing uh, because it it, it can be in such large um, masses that it's difficult to navigate the waters effectively through, the, through that weed. And then we also see the implications of the weed when it, it washes ashore and what it does to our coastal um, beachfront. Um, it also results in significant depletion of coastal species because it stifles them and creates an oxygen demand that allows the, many of those nearshore species to be threatened by its existence. He said four years ago, the Sagasum was linked to Dominica's first incident of cigaterra poisoning as a result of various species of fish that traveled with it. Maglo said while the Sagasum seaweed may provide an opportunity for fishers to catch more fish, there are many negative effects associated with its presence, which the relevant authorities need to closely monitor. There are some other potential uses that we can put to, to this weed. The weed can be, in my view, can be used uh, more positively, uh, when it washes to, uh, uh, on the shores, we can probably use it and gather it and collect it and um, process it and use it as fertilizers for um, farming and farming operations. So we, we have to, in my view, always look at the positives of these invasive arrangements and try and turn those invasive um, components into more positive economic activities that we can generate some some sort of positive good out of it rather than lament the fact of this negative. The chief fisheries officer said aspiring entrepreneurs can simply collect the sarcasm along the coastline, wash it thoroughly to remove its salt content, compost it to then sell to farmers for fertilizer. In Tobago, the government has been encouraging farmers to use it as fertilizer as it is full of nutrients and carbon, making it an excellent natural manure for farmers in the region. The sarcasm, which is a source of iodine, has been used in traditional Chinese medicine since the 8th century to treat goiters, thyroid disorders, and as a diuretic. It also treats pain from hernias and swollen testes. Currently, it is more of a challenge for us. It is more of a challenge currently because we have not yet explored the, the extent of the possibilities to which we can put it to effective use. Um, even, even when it washes ashore, Okay, we most cases we just allow it to stay there and deteriorate over time. Right? Magler added a lot more experimenting is necessary to derive positive uses from the sagasum. The seaweed has been occurring on various beaches in Dominica, however, no one is currently exploring its uses. And at least three state witnesses have testified in the murder trial involving Kenrick Tyson at the High Court on Monday. Tyson is accused of killing Cecil James at Hibiscus Inn in Concord between May 9th and 10th, 2009. We now go to Rima Alfred, who has more details. The state's first witness, medical doctor Martin Christmas, who had pronounced the body dead, testified that when he got to the scene of the crime, the deceased was laying on his back across a small bed partially naked. He also noted that there was a sufficient amount of blood on the bed and there was blood around her mouth and nose. Dr. Christmas said he was unable to recognize James since the face was disfigured by swelling. Nasha Daniel, Tyson's 15-year-old girlfriend at the time, told the court that she had been with Tyson on the night of May 9th and they had gone to the Hibiscus Inn. She said sometime during the night, Tyson entered James's house and hit him in the head with a piece of wood he had taken up from outside. She said he then removed James's pants and took his keys. 
Daniel said. James was getting up again when Tyson hit him again with the wood. She said during the entire episode, she was standing outside by the door and could see what was taking place inside because the windows were open and the moonlight was shining in. After he hit the man a second time and took some grocery items from the house, he handed her a bag which contained a gun and flashlight, then hit James a final time, taking up the keys to the vehicle James had. Upon leaving the inn, Daniel said James got rid of the piece of wood and removed six $20 bills from the wallet before he threw it away. They then left in the stolen jeep which crashed a distance away from the inn. They separated and Daniel said she got a ride to Tyson's grandmother's house in Sineku and Tyson came home the morning after with the bag which contained the gun, flashlight and other stolen items. Daniel said she told Tyson she heard the man had died and he told her she looked like a person who would sell him out. On May 15, she said Tyson left to hide the gun and on May 16, they were in Gullet River watching crickets when the police came for Tyson who ran away and they left together. Before going to the police station, Daniel said she took police to where the incident occurred where Tyson hid the gun and wallet and where he threw the piece of wood. Tyson, who had previous convictions, was found guilty of the murder and was sentenced to life in prison. However, that conviction was overturned by the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal. The conviction was then squashed and a retrial has been ordered. Thank you, Rhymer, for that report. Now that's it for local news. The latest in sports news is coming up next with Larry, so stay tuned. Count your Thursdays and win up to $24,000 in cash. For every $9 spent on Big Four, you get a raffle ticket to enter our weekly draws to win. $4,000 cash every Thursday for six weeks. The more you spend, the more tickets you get, the better your chances of winning every Thursday. That's $24,000 in cash. So play Big Four, count your Thursdays and win up to $24,000 in cash. Only from the Dominica National Lottery. Ooh, Promotion starts from February 24th to April 2nd. Fresher foods, bold flavors, more time. Get it all with appliances from Quartz. Purchase any appliance, $999 and over. You can be a weekly winner of $200 US dollars cash. Plus, purchase any Mabe appliance and win $11,000 in prizes of your choice. Shop with Quartz Ready Finance and pay absolutely nothing for 60 days. So find the solutions for your kitchen and laundry only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Good evening and welcome to 767 Sports. In tonight's coverage, we begin with football. There were no matches in the All-Island League on Tuesday evening as the Haitian Angels and Campbell Ballers failed to show up for their respective matches at the Buffet State playing field. Meanwhile, the match between Point Michel and Dr. Daru Stars scheduled for Wednesday evening at the Poré playing field has been rescheduled for Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Public Relations Office of the Dominica Football Association, Gerald Judge, has more matches scheduled for this week. On Tuesday, Win Judge Academy will come up against Exodus Boys, while on Friday, Be Your Strongs will battle Cassie Bruce. Both matches begin at 6 p.m. at the Buffet State Playing Field. In a double header at the Buffet State Playing Field on Saturday, Fukuli Classics will come up against Asian Angels at 5 p.m., while at 7 p.m., it will be White River Ballers versus Campbell Ballers. Two matches were played earlier this evening between Ian Pinard, Sufria Spartans, and Fukuli Classics, followed by White River Ballers versus Trafalgar Football Club. In more football, the Sansova Primary School girls football team on Tuesday emerged victorious in the final of the 2015 National Bank of Dominica Primary School Girls Football Championship. The team who secured its first victory 2-1 over Woodford Hill Primary in the semi-final round went on to defeat the Petit Savant Primary in the final game 3-1. The semi-final and final round of the competition took place on Tuesday, April 21st at the Cassibrus playing field. The woman on point was Captain Kamina Scott, who scored the hat-trick to secure the important victory for her team. In cricket, West Indies lost the toss and were put into bat against England in the second test on Tuesday at the National Cricket Stadium in Grenada. 
West Indies has made two changes, bringing in leg arm spinner Devendra Bishu and fast bowler Sharon Gabriel into bat, replacing left arm spinner Suleiman Ben and injured fast bowler Jerome Taylor. Taylor has been sidelined with a right shoulder injury. England has replaced James Treadwell with left-handed batsman Moeen Ali, who also bowls part-time off-spin. The free test series is level 0-0, following a draw in the first test, which ended last Friday at the Vivian Richards Cricket Ground in Antigua. The teams are as follows. West Indies, Craig Brathwaite, Devon Smith, Darren Bravo, Marlon Samuels, Shivnarin Shandapal, Jumin Blackwood, Dinesh Ramdin, captain, wicketkeeper, Jason Holder, Kemar Roach, Devendra Bishu, and Shannon Gabriel. England, Alistair Cook, captain, Jonathan Trott, Gary Balance, Ian Bell, Joe Root, Ben Stokes, Moeen Ali, Joss Butler, wicketkeeper, Stuart Broad, Chris Jordan, and James Anderson. And in more cricket, the West Indies Cricket Board has announced that it has made minor adjustments to the dates for its international home series between West Indies and Australia. All of the matches will now start two days earlier than previously scheduled. The matches are as follows. May 27th to 29th, tour match, Vivian Richards Cricket Ground, Antigua. June 3rd to 7th, first test, Windsor Park Stadium, Dominica. June 11th to 15th, second test, Sabina Park, Jamaica. And that's it for tonight's sportscast. Tune in again tomorrow for more sports. That was Larry with the latest in sports. Now for a recap of tonight's headline stories. MP for Dubla donates to education through lunch shed initiative. Fortney flood mitigation project near completion. And Chief Fisheries Officer sees a positive outlook to nuisance seaweed. In sports, one cancelled and another postponed in the DFA matches due to several no-shows. And that's all the time we have for now. Until tomorrow, drop us an email at media at 767news.dm. Friend us on Facebook and be sure to like our 767 News page. From all of us on the 767 News production team, I'm Alicia George wishing you a wonderful evening and thanks for watching.